Hi there, welcome back to our five part series on the Skydio 2. My name is Greg Snell, a professional videographer and drone pilot with UAV Coach. In this video, we're gonna cover the specific Skydio autonomous flight skills, the cinematic one shots, and the motion tracking modes. Let's get started. So the Skydio autonomous flight modes are known as skills, and I think you're probably going to recognize a few of them. I must also say right off the bat that the obstacle avoidance and motion tracking is impressive. So let's go over a quick rundown of the individual skills that you can perform with your Skydio 2. To begin with, when you launch your drone, the Skydio 2 will enter a hovering or loitering mode. This is just like any other drone manufacturers where when you're not touching anything or in a specific autonomous mode, the drone doesn't move. It will stay in a perfect hover wherever it is at that moment. However, this is not what the Skydio hover skill is. The hover skill is a little more intricate. Once you've initiated this through the app, the skill sets the drone in a fixed position, but you still have the ability to select and track a subject. While tracking a subject in the hover mode, the Skydio 2 will remain in a fixed position, but rotate to keep that subject in the frame. You can then adjust the height from which the Skydio 2 is hovering or change the distance from the current subject. This is pretty cool and indeed useful for very set frames where the subject just passes by the drone. It's essentially like a panning movement, which is a classic cinematic filming technique. The next thing we're gonna touch on is motion tracking, and this when paired with obstacle avoidance is honestly where the Skydio 2 really shines. You can initiate motion tracking from the app by tapping the blue plus button on the subject that you want to track. Skydio 2 has been built to recognize people and vehicles as subjects, and it happens to be really good at it. When motion tracking, the drone will maintain both its position and direction relative to the subject as it moves. Now you can change the tracking distance from the subject, you can also change the height and the direction that the drone is relative to the subject while tracking, while it's tracking in real time during the flight. Now I personally found this to be especially cool and really fun to play with in the field. However, while motion tracking, the Skydio 2 will prioritize avoiding obstacles over maintaining the selected position of the subject. This often creates a jerky and unpredictable flight path, especially in confined spaces. Once the drone has assessed its environment and avoided all obstacles, it will eventually return to its set tracking position. I found this somewhat difficult to predict and it really made it hard to sort of predetermine where the drone was going to be while it was autonomously tracking me through the woods. Where it really works best is in a relatively open environment. Overall, I personally think that the biggest selling point of the Skydio 2 is its ability to track subjects while moving and recording 4K60 and also avoiding obstacles at the same time. However, being able to do so while producing smooth and good quality footage has proven difficult. Next to your motion tracking icon is the fixed tracking skill. Fixed tracking is different from motion tracking because the camera or the drone will maintain its exact position relative to you or the subject in the exact orientation where you decide to point the drone. This means that the camera will always be facing in the direction that it starts at, even if your subject is changing direction within the frame. I find this skill especially useful if you want to continue flying in one specific direction with say a certain background in the frame while still avoiding obstacles. I want to jump in on myself real quick from the field here on location filming the parts of this video because I just finished the fixed tracking mode and one of the things that I noticed was that you do seem to have the availability of changing sort of the orbit of the drone around the subject. You see there at the bottom of the screen when you're in fixed tracking there's a uh, little like human figure and then there's a circle around that human figure in white you can actually move manually the smaller circle around that circle and from my experience here today that actually uh, moves the drone orbiting around that subject while fixed tracking which is kind of difficult to get the hang of but I could see it being very useful in the field when you want to track a specific subject going in one specific direction and yet still kind of like half orbit around that subject to create some really cool effects so yeah just my train of thought right uh, in the moment while filming this video. 
Next up is the orbit skill, and this is exactly like DJI's point of interest, which I absolutely love. I was especially impressed with the Skydio 2's orbiting mode because it was able to successfully avoid objects that were clearly set within its orbiting path. While in the orbit skill, the Skydio 2 will circle around the subject from a set distance at a constant rate and direction. Just like with the other skills and with the cinematic one-shot modes, which we'll cover in a moment, you can change the speed of the skill as well as the height and the distance from the subject. The fact that this little drone can maneuver around those giant obstacles while still tracking me and performing the orbit skill while recording 4K60 video is pretty incredible. I can see this skill being extremely useful in the field, allowing the creator to capture some absolutely stunning footage while not having to worry about where the drone is or about it crashing into something along its route. Next up is the cable cam skill. The cable cam skill is where you set a pre-planned flight path. This is very similar to DJI waypoints, which you may be familiar with. Once the skill has been selected on the app, you can pilot the drone to its first position known as position A, and you set the coordinates plus the camera angle you would like to start from. From there, you manually fly the drone to your desired endpoint or position B, and you apply that location and camera angle as the endpoint. You can then simply initiate the flight from one point to the other, and the drone will smoothly transition between the two positions, avoiding obstacles along the way, and even tracking a subject if one is selected within the frame. I personally think that the coolest part of this cable cam is when you can virtually see the points that you've set in the app as the A point, and it kind of is in like real time virtual reality, looks absolutely amazing. And then as you get closer to your end point, that uh, virtual B also comes into the frame and it just looks really, really cool. However, you can only set two positions with the cable cam skill, an A position and a B position. With DJI waypoints, you can set up to 99 different positions within one single flight, which is way more than you'd ever need. Some additional skills that Skydio has built into the app are known as cinematic one-shots, and these are your rocket, boomerang, vortex, and droney. And these do differ from DJI, and I could see them being useful in the field. So let's go over them one by one. The rocket is a one-shot skill where the drone flies straight up to a specified height in order to capture that classic bird's eye view of your subject. Once rocket is selected in the app, you can adjust the speed of the move and of course the height settings. All right, that's the rocket skill we just completed there. And in all honesty, that's probably my least favorite of all the skills that we've done so far. One time that I tried it, even lost connection with me and uh, it really didn't get that exact 90 degree angle looking straight down that we're used to with that top down kind of classic drone shot. So I think like as a drone pilot, the top down shot is really easy to do and I could do that manually much faster than, uh, than that rocket skill and as much as I think it's cool that it goes up automatically and comes back down it didn't really get the kind of top-down angle that I was expecting it to and then when it lost uh, lost connection with me as a subject when we're in a relatively open environment here was uh, was a bit of a surprise so yeah that's just my thoughts from the field directly about the rocket skill the next move is a vortex and this is probably my favorite of the four when selected, the vortex will begin close to the subject and then fly upwards and away while rotating or orbiting around the subject. There are three different styles of vortex that you can choose from, a disc, a corkscrew, or a tornado. All of these three moves control the distance and shape of the spiral movement around your subject. However, you can also then control the direction and speed or intensity of the skill. This is especially somewhat funny because the two options are mild or extreme. The vortex skill is, in my opinion, a more intense version of the orbit skill, both of which are relatively difficult to control manually. Hence, this skill and the orbit skill being extremely useful useful in the field to get those sweeping cinematic looking shots. My personal tip here would be to disable the height floor so that you can fly really close to the ground and this really creates a very dynamic, cinematic, powerful looking scene. 
The boomerang is a move exactly like the shape of a boomerang you would throw. So when selected in the app, the drone will rotate once around the subject, beginning close, and then flying up and further away before again returning close to the subject. Just like our other skills, you can of course change the speed, direction, and distance that the drone flies from your subject when performing the boomerang one-shot skill. And that is the boomerang complete here in the field on location. I wanted to jump in on myself real quick because uh, I don't really see that one being that useful. Kind of like the rocket. I think that it's, it's cool that it's built in and you can play with it in the field. But when it comes to getting like sort of cinematic, smooth, really cool looking footage while on assignment for a client in a film, I wouldn't be using that boomerang function. Now you did see it just missed that tree behind me, which was really cool while still tracking me, the subject. So I, I was definitely surprised surprised by that and another example of how good the obstacle avoidance is of the Skydio 2 while tracking a subject and recording 4K60 at the same time. But uh, all in all, I think the boomerang, uh, I probably wouldn't be using it that often. The Vortex, however, the Vortex, that's very cool. And the Droney, the Droney's pretty cool too. Finally, we have the Droney, and this has become kind of a household name for drone pilots because it is a move that everybody likes to do and it's relatively popular. However, funny enough, it's actually relatively difficult to do this when you're flying manually. I'm sure you've tried before when you've got full control on uh, a remote controller and you're trying to fly up and out away from your subject at a constant rate while keeping yourself or the subject in the center of the frame. That is surprisingly relatively difficult to do. The Droney skill from Skydio's cinematic one-shots solves this problem for you by doing it automatically. Again, the Skydio tracking is so good that you can 100% trust it to do this move well, especially in an open environment. You can also, of course, control the speed, height, and distance that the Droney will be performed. All right, and there we have it. That is a quick rundown of some of the Skydio 2 skills, which include the amazing subject tracking as well as the obstacle avoidance, and then it's built-in cinematic one-shots, which are pretty cool. I mean, as I said at the beginning of this video, you're probably gonna recognize a few of these skills like the orbiting mode and the cable cam, but some of them are new and very useful, including the rocket and the droney and the vortex especially, which is really cool. So it's been fun to test these out, and I think my, my closing arguments here as a professional drone pilot are that this drone would be extremely useful in the field for subject tracking of a moving object where it's potentially you yourself as the content creator and you can't be controlling the drone at the same time or if you're afraid of the drone you know hitting something or it needs to have that obstacle avoidance while tracking that subject because the obstacle avoidance of this drone is absolutely fantastic and it does take priority over subject tracking which can make it a bit more difficult to get smooth cinematic shots but I've noticed that if you're in more or less a wide open environment it does a really good job of holding the subject and being able to track it during whatever skill or movement you are doing. Now in these uh, tighter, more confined spaces, it's definitely a little bit more jerky, but it still definitely doesn't hit anything, which is huge. So as long as you kind of get to practice with the drone and you give it a bit more time, you know, you'll learn how it reacts and kind of the way that the software is built to avoid these obstacles while still tracking you. And I think just more practice, the better you'll get at it and then you can edit that footage in a way that still makes it look great but that's it for us here in our second video of this five-part series so be sure to check out the rest of the videos linked in the description below and from everybody here at the uav coach team we're wishing you blue skies and safe flying